Howdy do everybody, jump start coming out. Got a box of it right here, just wanted to take a look at it. I'm most excited about the fact that you can jump into the game, start helping people play without a lot of investment. The whole thing about jump start, compared to a normal booster pack, is that they are all themed. Um, but they are random themes, so one might be dogs, one might be cats, one might be dragons, one might be uh, doctor, one might be spellcaster. Uh, but you mix and match them. Uh, you just get two packs, open them up, mash them together, and start playing. Welcome to Jumpstart. As you see, you and a buddy can just get going playing. You don't have to worry about, oh, do I have enough land ratio in my sealed deck? Do I have enough creatures in my booster draft? With this, all the deck construction is taken care of for you. Each booster pack has 20 cards. So you've got creatures, you've got lands. They are built ready to go. Let's take a look at some of these here. Let's see what we got. I kind of wish they had gone back to the, uh, the old wax uh, packs, you know, just for some nostalgia sake. And this, I really like this. So what you have here is an inner seal, which should in theory help eliminate um, in Core 21 especially in the collector booster packs, where the seal met and was uh, stamped together. And the foil card, the token in the back, had a seam line going down it. And you can see here on this plastic wrapping, you got that in it as well. So I really like that these have individual, looks like they're easy tear, because there's a strip going around, a little tab there. And this looks like a vampire's You could even use this as a vampire token. I mean, that's that's pretty awesome. Let's see what we got here. Definitely gives you that feel if you wanted to go in for a sealed deck for limited. All right, so there's nothing on the back. Kind of wish they had put like a vampire token on the back, uh, but you could easily use this as a substitute. Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, Silver Smoked Ghoul, Blood Artist. I don't remember this guy from either of our Core 21 or Collector Box, so this must be one of the ones exclusive to Jumpstart. Jumpstart has a lot of reprints in it. It is also going to have 30-some uh, unique cards just to Jumpstart. So you definitely want to grab a few packs. Um, don't just open the packs like I'm doing. Get some friends. You know, have some fun with it over the weekend, and then you'll have all the cards afterwards. So we got a black and one for an O1 vampire. Whenever a blood artist or another creature dies, target player loses one life, and you gain one life. So I believe that's a reprint. I think I've heard of this guy before. Blood Bond Vampire, Gifted Aetherborn, that's not bad for two. Two black mana for a 2-3 vampire that has both death touch and lifelink, that's a really good uh, early creature. The Sanguine Indulgence, Agonizing Siphon. Eternal Thirst. Calastria. Nightwatch. I really like the artwork on that. So you got a black and four vampire warrior ally. So you have three different deck options to use this in when you're done playing it as part of your jumpstart games. Whenever you gain life, Calastria Nightwatch gains flying until end of turn four or five. 
last gasp. Nocturnal feeder. This would be uh, kind of useful in a vampire commander deck just because it hits each opponent. That's a pretty big life swing for you. Thriving more. When Thriving More enters the enters the battlefield, tap. As Thriving More enters the battlefield, choose a color other than black. Tap at a black or one mana of the chosen color. That's pretty cool. I really like that. That's amazing. Very versatile land. Gloom Sower. And then it looks like we got some basics back here. And I've heard there's like little subsets of basic lands uh, out there. Let's see what else we got. There's this one's elves. And I believe there are different types. So there's like, I think, multiple vampire decks, multiple elf decks. Again, kind of hoping that they had uh, tokens on the back. What have we got here? Allosaurus Shepherd. So we did get a mythic. Nice. Sometimes some of the packs will have um, mythics. Sometimes some of the packs will have two rares uh, in them. It really all depends on the deck build that is built. So all in all, you are going to get roughly the same amount of rares that you would in a normal booster box. It's just because they're fixed, the amount of variety that you're going to get among the rares it's going to be a little different. Ren's Run Vanquisher. I hadn't seen that one before. That's kind of neat. Green and one for a 3 3. As an additional cost to cast this spell, reveal an elf card from your hand or pay three. So, two for a 3 3 death touch. Unfortunately, it's uncommon. So, you know, running it in a pauper deck, mm, not sure. But. Two for a 3-3 three, three with Death Touch. That all you have to do is reveal another elf. Pretty good. Hunter's Edge. Oh wow, look at that. Crushing Canopy. Green and two. Choose one. Destroy a target creature with a flying or destroy a target in chip. I always love cards that give you choice. Thriving Grove. Alright, so it looks like there is a whole land cycle series in here. Beautiful artwork. Where um, you get to choose the other colors. So these are very good splash lands. So if you're running green, white, uh, you can definitely want to run that. Anything that you're running green and other colors in, those, those look pretty nice. And they allow you to have the freedom to build whatever deck you want. They're definitely designed for jumpstart because if you're mashing two of these packs together, um, kind of like you do with Smash Up, you will always pretty much for the most part have another color that you have to worry about. So these really help with the mana fixing. So if each pack has one of these, that's, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's, that's a beautiful looking, are those spears or is that grass? Yeah, yeah those are pole arms, spears, glaives, rain sewers, I think that's a war scythe. No, this one over here is definitely a war scythe. But Matt, scythes are long, curved, and swing outwards. No, nope, um, there were lots of different types of war scythes. Um, in fact, if you want, um, do a YouTube search for Polish war scythe, and you'll see uh, one of them being demonstrated. A little bit of history for you. Well read. So it's got a merfolk on it. So I'm not sure if this, it's definitely going to be blue. So I like how it has the color identity down here. And it looks like they're all single color. I wonder if there's like an all artifact one. What, what basics would they use in that? Oh yeah, 
who we got? Ormos. Archive Keeper. That's just amazing. Two blue and four. Legendary Creature Sphinx flying. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, instead put five 1-1 one -one counters on Ormos Archive Keeper. Two blue and one. Discard three cards with different names. Draw five cards. This <laughs> this is amazing. I kind of want to make a commander deck around this. Oh my goodness. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing a blue deck. I don't care about drawing every card in my deck. I'm just going to put Ormos out and not worry about decking myself. Really easy to discard three cards with different names in a commander deck. Yeah. Yeah, really, really like that. Tolarian Kraken from M21. Curiosity. So yeah, it looks like it's all about drawing cards. Whenever you draw a card from a one counter on a narrow phage. <laughs> Suspicious bookcase. Tome Anima. Alright, this 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 is amazing. Library Larcenist. That's pretty cool. Put opt in there. Narcolepsy. Oh, that's pretty cool. When it dies, each player draws a card. Because that would trigger... Because um, a lot of blue effects allow you to draw cards when your opponents draw cards. So if you're forcing all your opponents to draw cards when this guy dies, not only do you get your card, but then you get all your triggers from them drawing cards. Here's the Thriving Isle. It's the blue version of the Choose Your Paired Land mana symbol. Beautiful. I wish they, I hope they make these in foil. I hope there are foil cards in Jumpstart. If there aren't foil cards in Jumpstart, I think they're missing out. Wow, look at that island. At first I thought it was just cliffs, but no, it's like giant books. did that one. Who do we have to thank for that? Come on, focus. Adam Paquit. Paquit. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name. Adam, thank you for that. That is just amazing. This looks like the sort of thing uh, Charles Urbach would do for a uh, one of his Origins commissions. <coughs> A lot of classic islands in there. All in all, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed so far. I really like the feel of each of these packs so far. I feel like they'd be able to mash together pretty well. You can have well read vampires. What do we have here? Heavily armored. <laughs> and it looks like these token symbols kind of not only tell you about the theme. But also maybe one of the cards you're getting in it. So this is definitely going to be uh, white down there. But heavily armored. We're, I think we're either looking at soldiers and or equipment. So what do we got here? Cathar's Crusade. That's pretty cool. White, white, three. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. Yep. This, there it is. Right there. The one one counter on target creature with the one one counter on it. We've already seen this one from M21. Gird for battle. Yep, that definitely is in theme. Patron of the Valiant. White, white, three for a four, four flying. When Patron of the Valiant enters the battlefield, put a one one counter on each creature you control with a one one counter on it. That's pretty great. It'll pair well with uh, some of the new Basri stuff, the new, uh, the new White Man of Planeswalker. Siege Striker, Secure the Scene, Battlefield Promotion. Put one counter on target creature. That creature gains first strike until end of turn you gain two life. It is an instant, so that, that two mana cost is probably worth it, because this, this could help save a creature. And Bulwark Giant. Trusty Retriever, I don't remember 
pulling this one from M21. So this must be new for Jumpstart. White the three for a two three. When Trusty Retriever enters the battlefield, choose one. Put a one-wood counter on Trusty Retriever. Um, or return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Not bad. So it's either four for a three four. And it's a dog, so it, it'll fit the it'll fit the dog theme. Uh, or it's four for a two three that you can get one of your essential equipments back. So far, I haven't come across any equipment in this deck. Lightwalker. Makeshift Battalion. And then Thriving Heath. Elena, amazing piece of art. Just beautiful. Because the way you have the light just right over there, but then a little bit shadow as if it's coming up over the crest of the hill, and the light just hasn't gotten here yet, that's, that's amazing. Did a really great job. I, I love light effects like that. Ooh, look at that planes. What is that, like a metallic egg reflecting the landscape? It's kind of amazing. It might be like a, a dark steel ingot or something. It's just out in the wilds reflecting the landscape around it. See what else we have available. What's this one? Minotaurs! I have always loved Minotaurs ever since the old Herloon Minotaurs. Uh, and then in Homelands, they came out with, uh, I call them didgeridoos. Some people pronounce it didgeridoos. Is there a right and a wrong way to pronounce it? No, as long as you have fun and everyone knows what you mean. Look at that artwork. I really hope <laughs> everything falls to fashion and we get a card with this artwork. And <laughs> there it is. Seth Ron, her loon general. Red, red, and three. Legendary creature. Minotaur warrior for a 4-4. Four, four. When Seth Ron, her loon general. Or another known token Minotaur enters the battlefield under your control. Create a 2 3 red Minotaur creature token. 2. And then either red or black Minotaurs you control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain menace and haste until end of turn. Rawr! And you know what? With a Sharpie? I can make a 2-3 Minotaur out of this. Herloon General! <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. I love this product. I love this card. That's just amazing. What we got here? Blood Rage Brawler. Minotaur Warrior. Oh. Oh. I, I love the card. But it's a horn. Warfire Javelinier. That's just an amazing name. When it enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to target creature and opponent controls, where X is the number of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard. It's not bad. We haven't come across that many instant. And, of course, there's an instant with a minotaur on it. Awesome. Love it. Sure strike. Borderland Minotaur. Just a straight up four for a four three. You can never go wrong with a good stable. Hey, look at this. You get to make Minotaur creature tokens, even more two three. So yeah, you definitely are gonna need to get some Minotaur tokens. Lightning Visionary Minotaur Shaman. Look at that artwork. I would love to have this in foil. Give me a full art foil of this. Like, next time you do a Jumpstart product with, you know, awesome artwork and amazing themes, Watsy, do Jumpstart collector packs. <laughs> that way, that way uh, you can have special collector pack versions of these Jumpstart packs, with, like full art. And, and make your game as beautiful as possible. Minotaur Sure Shot, so a Minotaur Archer? That's awesome. 
That's a D&D character idea right there. Minotaur Sure Shot gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. By the way, if anyone wants to play in a D&D campaign where we are all Minotaurs, let me know. I will try and find a GM to do it. Mugging. All right, it's a sorcery, but you prevent someone from blocking. But odds are if you're using uh, your burn spell, it's to kill something, so it's not going to be able to block anyway. Thriving Bluff. You mean Thunder Bluff. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, look at that flavor text. As eons passed, the rock wore away, revealing the rich colors at the mountain's heart. Oh yeah, look at that striation that they've, they've done on the mountain, that purple going through and the different yellow lines. That's great. Oh wow, look at this. Minotaur architecture, I would assume. Very thematic. All right, so I'd have to say the this Minotaur pack is <laughs> my favorite so far. This is just this is just fun. Yeah, any other boxes that I get, I'm definitely going to be keeping just to um, actually play with the Jumpstart cards. This one I wanted to open up. Uh, so we got another vampire here, uh, just to see. You know what? Let's get that other vampire. Uh, deck back out here. That was my first one. So let's wait until we get to here. Let's see if we got a different one or if we got the same one. We got two more packs in that one. Let's flip these back in order. All right. Let's see what we got. Okay, we got a different one. So it is a different deck. Jana, Liberator of Malakir. That's just great. Taking a moment to enjoy that. So two black and one for a two, three flyer. All right, you've got me. Flying first strike. Love it. I'm sold. Wait, there's more words underneath? Whenever Drana Liberator of Malakir deals combat damage to a player, put a 1 1 counter on each attacking creature you control. <sighs> yeah, that, that's a mythic. I will not live as a slave. If you would be free, then fight alongside me. <laughs> awesome. Uh, but then it looks like we start going into some familiar faces. Now we got some variation here. We got Bloodborne Vampire as opposed to Blood Artist. Falcon Wrath Noble. At, oh, so yeah, we do have the Bloodborne Vampire in both, just in different spaces. Uh, Gifted Aetherborn. So you can expect a lot of similarities between them with a few variations just to give it a little bit different theme. Oh, so yep, yeah, we've got the double there, just in a different spot. And it goes back to matching. So it looks like every pack you do get one of your pair lands. And then it goes into the basic lands and they are matching card. Oh, no, that one uh, swapped it out a little bit. So it looks like they were just swapped around. Oh, and you do have one set of different basics. Not bad. Not bad at all. So it is possible to get like two vampire decks, put them together, and you get either a solid straight up vampire deck with a little bit of variation in cards. You don't have to worry about doubling up too much. But really, um, like the instruction set that I showed at the beginning, um, I don't have a vampire. Hey, another Drana. That is amazing. We got two of the Drana Mythics. And then everything else is going to be the same. So let's put Drana back on top. Open and jump start before I go to work today. 
Doctor? Doctor Who? Okay, huh. it's, a, it's a joke that everyone's going to be doing. So this looks like a white deck. Uh, just looking at this potion here with the sky full of arrows, it looks like this is going to be a life gain deck or a healing deck. And sure enough, we have a cleric, so I'm guessing it's just going to be a deck of clerics and apothecaries and soygeans. Brightmare. When it enters the battlefield, target up to one target creature, you gain life equal to that creature's power. That's pretty cool. Boot to the face! Another cleric, life linker, pump ability. So uh, when we opened up um, our M21, I pointed out that this is uh, probably not something you're going to run a whole lot in uh, constructed, but in limited formats, really good. So I'm glad that they they included this one, just because it's a good uh, early attacker to maybe get you one or two hit points um, if you have some buff spells. Probably hold out, fend some things off, but when you get later in the game. Um, being able to make it a 4-4, four, four, maybe even more, um, really, really good. Definitely a lot of versatility in that. And versatility is what you need in Limited. Like the Mesa Unicorn here, just by comparison. Uh, it costs a little bit more, so, two, so you have to wait for your second turn to get it out, usually Limited, for a 2-2 two, two lifelink. It doesn't have anything else going on. So after, like, turn 2, um, it's probably going to be blocking and dying. Or it'll swing in for a chump attack and die, or it'll die to a burn spell. Whereas the anointer, you do have some late game options. Uh, in late game, usually everyone is just relying on top deck and limited. Take heart, thriving heath, Azri's acolyte. I've heard there are planeswalker decks as well. So not just creatures like that. It's just all these ley lines just shooting up light. Energy, that's just amazing. This would be this would look great in foil, I believe. Click, click, click. Click, 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 click. Awesome. So we've already got a rare per pack. We've got some unique cards. We've gotten two mythics, even though they were duplicates. So as you see, you're gonna like get some duplicate mythics and duplicate rares. Just because of the nature of this product, we got another heavily armored here to round out the first stack. Duelist Heritage. What is going on there? It's like some sort of anime shield. My camera can't even <laughs> pick up the color of the shield. I'll turn it one way and it'll look silver, and then I'll turn it another way and it looks gold. So, a white and two for an enchantment. Whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double strike until end of turn. Ah! Alright, so just pointing this out now, this in a commander deck just causes all kinds of craziness. Because it doesn't say your creature. Just whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double strike until end of turn. So every time your opponents attack, if they're attacking an opponent, give that uh, Blightsteel Colossus double strike. Go for it, buddy. The best techniques outlive their creators. So just having this out, yeah, people are going to be afraid of you, but if you don't have that many creatures out, uh, if you don't present yourself as too big a threat, you, you you could definitely politicize this. So that's amazing. Not only is this great in the deck itself, in this limited environment, but when you take this deck apart and you use that in Commander, yeah, yeah you look pretty good. I might even think about trying to make a, a green, white, or blue, white Infect deck with this, just so your Infect creatures can get double strike fairly regularly. I don't know. But look, we got a double rare. Look at that. What else do we have here? High Sentinels of Arashin. White 3 for a 3 4 bird soldier flying. High Sentinels of Arashin. Gets plus 1 plus 1 for each other creature you control with a 1 1 counter on it. 
and has the ability to put 1-1 one -one counters on things later in the game. Now, uh, like the turn it come, uh, well, the turn after it comes out if you used all your mana to bring it out. But yeah, these bird guys are just standing sentry. They're ready for it. I'm like, bring it. We're holding the parapets. More doggos. Supply runners. Reminds me of Call of the Wild. White and four for a 2-2 two -two when Supply Runners enters the battlefield put one counter on each other creature you control. <laughs> Look at that flavor text. Good dogs stay by your side until the end. Great dogs leave to bring back aid. Trusty Retriever. So happy. Yeah. Oh, how happy that guy is. He's like, I got a sword. He's so excited he doesn't even remember where the person is he's supposed to be taking it to. Alright, so this looks like the special uh, planes land. I imagine we'll have that in pretty much any of the white mana decks. So that's the first stack. We're at 31 minutes, so I'm going to Pause it there. We'll upload this, and then uh, maybe later we'll take a look at uh, another stack. We still have plenty of packs. As you can see, there's a lot to go through. There's a lot to examine. There's a lot to have fun with. Maybe this next pack will, uh, you know, start mashing some decks together, or we'll just, you know, keep examining the contents. Just gonna have fun with this. That's part. Of, that's part of the excitement around this is just being able to sit back. Pat, uh, uh, uncrack the packs and see what's what see what's in each one very exciting time i love it very excited i always love the exploration of cards so as always thank you for watching we'll come back later and do some more packs but during this whole COVID thing as always stay safe